Hi, future bureaucrats of India. Welcome to Learn Stroke and welcome to Simply Simplified, the exclusive current affairs review for civil service examination. So as you know, this is a newspaper analysis and we give you the decoded version of the important news items that appeared in today's newspaper. So you're doing this session with me, Arjun R. Shankar. And let's quickly take a close look at the important topics that we have to discuss in today's session. And the first one is mucormycosis, the black fungus. It has been hitting the national headlines for quite a few times. And you need to know what do you mean by the mucormycosis, the black fungus, how does it spread? And what do you mean by oxycare technology? And what do you mean by oxygen solidarity bridge in this regard? And uh, you must have heard about quad. Very important topic for international relations and global affairs because you should know what you mean by quad. What is the quad equation and the quad diplomacy? And what is the new concept of an Asian NATO of the future? Because this is something which China has been alleging the whole Indian subcontinent political equation that there is going to be an Asian NATO. So what is that concept? And you should also find out what do you mean by a zero shadow day? What is the meaning of zero shadow day? And Israel's the Iron Dome rocket interception technique. There is this is something that the world has been talking about because of the uh, Israel-Palestine crisis happening. The Israel's Iron Dome rocket interception. This interception technique is getting viral in the newspapers and social media also, and many other important news leads that you have to prepare from all the important current affairs items. So. These are some of the important things that you have to remember. And uh, let's quickly get into the first important issue. That is mucormycosis, the black fungus. This has been hitting the news. A lot of newspapers have been reporting this. The black fungus looms among patients in oxygen and how to identify the signs and symptoms of mucormycosis or black fungus infection. So these are the important links that I wanted to share. And now let's quickly get into the major points and C. Yes, let's quickly begin. And before we start on with this mycormycosis, you should know what is this concept of the black fungus? What is this black fungus? You need to know that in detail. Basically, people say that this is a rare infection. It is a rare infection. And uh, from the word itself, you, you can find out the mucor mold. You can find out the mucor mold, which is actually found everywhere. That is found in the soils. It is found in the decayed plants. It is actually found in the uh, manure and uh, even in the mucus and nose and uh, mucus of several humans also. So it is also found in the human body. So it is found in naturally and just like a bread in when moisture, just, just like the example of a bread, when exposed to moisture becomes rotten or is infected by fungus, this is very similar to that. So what is this basic concept of the mucormycosis and how does this affect? This is a key question. And we see that this infection is something which is very prevalent among the COVID patients, basically because of many reasons. This is very popular now and dominant in COVID patients. And why? The reason is because it can where can you where, where do you think it is affecting it affects the sinus it is affecting the sinus it affects the brain it affects the lungs and the end result is that sometimes when it affects the sinus when it affects the brain lungs it can lead to the permanent loss of your eye the vision it can be uh, it can disrepair your vision it can take away your vision and it can eventually lead to death so very alarming, a lot of people are really worrying about this mucormycosis and a lot of COVID patients are being infected with this. And what is the reason why this is very dominant among the uh, COVID patients? And the number one reason is because majority when you are in COVID and uh, the treatment is basically a lot of steroids is given. A lot of steroids is given to the patients and what happens is the continuous consumption of steroid creates what it reduces the immunity in the body it reduces the immunity in the body that is a very very big factor the continuous taking of steroids will reduces the immunity and the situation is very different when you are 
affected with diabetes if you have diabetes then the situation is too high because normally you say that this is the relation when you have diabetes and when you're affected with covid what normally happens is this increases the blood sugar level both for diabetic patient as well as not it increases the uh, blood sugar levels for both covid patients with diabetes and people covid patients without diabetic or non diabetic people what happens is when you are diabetic and when you are contracted with covid continuous steroids you know what they will do they will raise your blood sugar level for both diabetic as well as non diabetic patients and what happens is finally your body is having low immunity in this such situations you see that the black fungus is very very easy to come the black fungus is very very easy to attack your body and that results in the loss of vision and death you 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 get problems in the sinus you have problems in the eyes you have problems in the brain and your problems in the lungs and finally it eventually creates in death so this is the general thing that you have to know about the mucormycosis or the black fungus now i have given you a fair good idea about how this is connected to diabetes and uh, how it is connected to the steroids and how the word the key word is immunity the immunity is reduced and how that is creating a perfect scenario for the black fungus to attack the body so these are the important points that we have to discuss and let's quickly take the important points and mark the keywords it is a very rare infection i told you and the mucor molds is very commonly found in soil plants manure decaying fruits and vegetables etc and it is even found in soil it is found in air and in the nose and mucus of healthy people and human beings it is also found in the humans and it affects the sinus i hope you know where the sinus is it affects the sinus it affects the brain the lungs and can be life threatening in diabetic situation or when you are severely when you are immunocompromised that is a word when you are immunocompromised or with diabetic or if you are having hiv or aids or cancer patients it becomes very severe and they believe the mortality rate is almost 50% may be triggered when you use the steroid that is the reason why i said if you using steroids it will eventually lead to a reduced immunity when you don't have the proper immunity your body defense system doesn't work and mucormycosis is very very easy to affect your body so these are the important points in this and let's take the look at the uh, other keywords and grab the keywords i gave you the example of the bread this is very similar to the bread and if not it it results in the loss of vision in both the eyes and death and uh, when you take steroids it says that you will have a decrease immunity and it increases the case of black fungus when you have a low immunity level the chances of your body getting black fungus is very high so mucormycosis chances are high when your body immunity lows down and your body immunity can lows down in what which all conditions when you use steroids if you are diabetic if you get covid 19 all these increases the chance of that and uh, if the fungal goes in the nostrils it reaches the sinus where it multiplies and you lose your sight and paralysis everything is going to happen so these are the important important quick points that i and a very important point to be noted as far as the study says that the disease mucormycosis does not spread from one person to another normally like the other disease it doesn't spread from one person to another this is the recent study which says about this and uh, let's sum this up by taking the key important points normally say that it, it this talks about the diabetic and the steroid connection when you take steroids it reduces inflammation in the lungs and uh, what happens is it reduces the immunity and push up the blood sugar levels in both diabetic as well as non diabetic patients i told you it increases the sugar blood sugar levels and when this happens there is a drop in immunity and when diabetes lowers the body immune system corona virus increases exacerbates and what happens is when you take steroids the situation is totally out of hand so these are some of the important points that you should definitely remember about mucormycosis or the black fungus and it is said that it can also occur on the skin after a cut burn or any type of skin injury can also cause this but now the serious concern is regarding the covid patients especially and please remember the important concept of black fungus and how it works and please remember the keyword immunity 
everything starts from low immunity in the body the next important topic is oxy care technology so uh, it's something an important news which is actually making important waves as per the uh, covid treatment as, and as far as the oxygen supply is concerned you need to find out what you mean by oxy care technology a lot of articles in the news government approves procurement of 15000 150000 units of drdo's oxy care system and what is this spo2 based oxy care system by drdo and uh, in total they're going to buy 1.5 lakh units of this so quickly find out what is the most important technology and what do you mean by this thing called as oxy care technology very important so basically the important keyword says that the oxy care system is such that the uh, oxygen is actually su supplied by the cylinder the oxygen is supplied by the cylinder and the technology and the tech says that the oxygen supplied from the oxygen cylinder is such on the basis of the spo2 level of the patient that is very very important it is actually uh, you get the ox oxycare simply means you get the oxygen supplied from the main oxygen cylinder but the tech involved here is that the uh, amount of oxygen that is actually supplied from the oxygen cylinder to the patient depends upon the spo2 level of the patient that means the oxygen saturation level of the patient and a very very important concepts and in this concept you should know what is the concept of hypoxia you need to discuss what do you mean by hypoxia and how an oxygen saturation if it is 94 and below it can lead to a hypoxia and if it is below 90 definitely it is a clinical emergency so a lot of technology related thing like oxy care system which is created by drdo as the pm cares fund has sanctioned more than 1.5 lakh devices called oxy care technology for the people so basically the tech is that it depends upon the spo2 so quickly and in this also you should also find out what do you mean by debel what do you mean by debel let's for quickly find out the answers to all those question right away and let's mark the key words here pm cares fund you should know what you mean by prime minister citizens assistance and relief in emergency situations fund has sanctioned the procurement of 1.5 lakh units and who is making it drdo is making it and the technology is very simple it delivers oxygen from a medical cylinder but the oxygen is delivered based on the sp2 spo2 level of the patient and what do you mean by debel it was developed by defense bioengineering and electromedical laboratory of bengaluru the drdo and this was basically created for army soldiers who were posted in the extreme high altitude areas so drdo was making them for that so in this context find remember the concept called as debel if you happen to see it somewhere in the prelims it is defense bioengineering and electric medico lab laboratory which is called as debel so please remember that and uh, the oxycare delivers supplemental oxygen based on the spo2 level and prevents a person from sinking into a state of hypoxia so you should know what do you mean by hypoxia and what state is that let's quickly uh, take a look at that and uh, you should know that before we move on to this you should know what do you mean by oxygen saturation that is the first point what do you mean by oxygen saturation this is an important point that you should definitely uh, remember here because you should know what do you mean by an oxygen saturation because quickly i'll tell you what do you mean by oxygen saturation and uh, you should know that 98% of oxygen in the blood is carried by hemoglobin that is the first point and one molecules of hemoglobin carries up to four molecules of oxygen so you should know that there is a binding relationship between oxygen and hemoglobin so that means one hemoglobin molecules carry four molecules of oxygen and this is what is described as saturation so one hemoglobin molecule carrying four molecules of oxygen you say that this is a saturating point and such saturating point is what is called as oxygen saturation so nothing it refers to the extent of hemoglobin that is bound to the saturation of oxygen so you can see the hb as well as the oxygen hb as well as oxygen and how much one molecular hb attaches or binds 
how many molecules of one hb molecules binds four molecules of oxygen and when this happens, you say that saturation is happening so this is what is called a saturation and it can be easily measured using the spo2 and you should know see that the uh, normal is 95 to 100 percent saturation and when you see that 94 percent or lower this is called as hypoxia this is what is called as hypoxia and if the saturation is less than 90 then it is a clinical emergency so that is the point that you have to note here so in this concept please understand what do you mean by oxygen saturation that is nothing but the binding relationship between hemoglobin and oxygen one hemoglobin molecule carries four molecules of oxygen that is the important point that you have to make here and uh, yes so this is all about oxycare technology and please remember the concept of devil drdu and why how the technology of oxycare works and uh, let's bring the concept of samudra setu what is samudra setu launched by navy ins tarkash got in mumbai and brought liquid medical oxygen lmo so they are been carrying so indian navy is also in the scene and this concept you should know you should find out what do you mean by samudra setu what is the concept of samudra setu and this was a very important mission actually to bring back or repatriate it was actually a repatriation mission what do you mean by repatriation mission it was a repatriation mission to bring back indian citizens from overseas so samudra setu read more about samudra setu and find out how this was a repatriation measure when people of indian origin and indian citizens were brought from overseas and that was a mission of that and the concept of oxygen solidarity bridge is nothing but a french mission in supplying medical aid especially to covid 19 and in the wake of covid 19 the pandemic oxygen shortage has been huge so oxygen solidarity bridge is actually a french mission so if you see the word oxygen solidarity bridge it's a french mission and uh, these are the important news items that you should remember about oxycare technology and the oxygen solidarity bridge let's quickly take an important idea about news leads for civil services the important topics that you have to study from this area first of all you need to know what you mean by liquid medical oxygen you should know what are the different features of liquid medical oxygen all these can be questions for prelims as well as mains most probably these can be questions for prelims what is liquid medical oxygen and what is the state of hypoxia and pm cares fund the prime minister citizens assistance and relief and emergency situation why is this constitution you can check out the previous video of learn stroke we have created something called as prelims relay and in that prelims relay we have in detailed i have explained about pm cares what is the constitution how is the fund constituted and uh, it's something called as a pre bono it is actually uh, there is a concept of pre bono and what is this concept of pre bono and uh, what is the constitution how many ministers are part of this who is the chairperson what is the constitution etc so read if you want just plus check the uh, prelims relay video you can find it and find out about drdo and find about operation samudra setu know more about this for the prelims examination so this was an important topic the next important news item is regarding the quad equation what do you mean by the quad the, the latest issue there, there, there have been a lot of issues and uh, news article relating about quad equation and the quad diplomacy between the country so it is something that is appearing in the current affairs and is very very important for prelims as well as for the mains perspective you should know what you mean by the quad equation and what is the reason uh, reason why the news is actually happening because bangladesh rebuffs china on the quad warning because china has issued a warning against bangladesh because the china bangladesh anti uh, pandemic cooperation is also something very popular because they are already in collaboration with the vaccines and in this regard what is china taking an action against bangladesh and what is the remark and what is the in this regard we should find out what is quad and what is the equation in a brief format so let's quickly find out what is the main issue here and the main issue is basically this the quad equation so basically you should know the flags indicated very clearly united states of america india australia and japan so basically you see the the geographical region involved is nothing but indo-pacific the indo-pacific region so you need to know the indo-pacific regions political dynamics 
very very important for the international relations perspective so this countries united states of america india australia and japan are coming together and the region that they talk about is indo pacific and when indo pacific comes why is indo pacific comes the most important challenger is the country china china is the biggest challenger here so when all this country apart from china are creating an strategic quad or quadrilateral arrangement or diplomatic arrangement or a sharing system between each other china sees that this is to actually counter china's ambitions so this is what china thinks about this equation this is just quickly i'm telling you so when you see an international agreement or a group of countries like united states of america india australia and japan coming together in this regard in indo pacific region what can be the global dynamics involved in this and china believes that this is to counter china's ambition or china's economic rise so that can be one such reason and uh, this is which says china does not recognize quad and and even says quad is the nato of the future nato of asia this is going to be the uh, nato of asia and the latest issue being in this regard these are the countries which normally try to discuss about the indo pacific the events happening in indo pacific and lot of security uh, aspects also but in this context dhaka or bangladesh got an it is not an official invite but there was a chance that what if bangladesh also joins the indo pacific or this squad they basically they do not have a plan of expansion but still what if bangladesh is also invited for joining the quad group so china has given a clear warning to bangladesh that you will you cannot do this and uh, you cannot do this because this is basically this whole movement is basically something to counter china's ambitious rise economic rise so bangladesh cannot be part of this and that is the reason why China and Bangladesh recently is having a very good relation because Bangladesh is dependent on China on many things and the reason one being vaccines. So this is the important theories that you have to remember here and now let's quickly mark the key words of this current affair issue. And uh, the Dhaka envoys have asked Chinese people to maintain decency and decorum because China warned Bangladesh not to consider joining the quad grouping and said doing so would damage relationship with China and Bangladesh says that as a sovereign country Bangladesh will determine the course of its foreign policy and China will not dictate that this is what they say and uh, China believes that the quad is a click against China and rally around China to work against China so it it sees that it is a ploy by the United States and India and japan and australia to work against china and to control the rise of china most probably us ultimate intention is that so this is why bangladesh has been warned by china and let's take a quick important points regarding this and the quad is to basically safeguard shared security and indo pacific is a keyword that you have to draw and countering china's military and economic rise is one premise of creating this quad which are the country india australia japan united states so you can easily say india you can say india japan australia and united states of america and march 12 was the first historic day when they virtually met for the first quad summit previously they used to meet only during the foreign secretary level talks the quad meeting should normally used to happen during the foreign secretary level talks and now we had the first quad summit so the quad which means quadrilateral security dialogue that is the expansion of this it means the quadrilateral security dialogue and it also conducts joint military exercise and in this regard you will remember that exercise is between when all these countries you come together to create an international military exercise and that is called as malabar very very important this can even be asked for the prelims examination and for the mains this exercise is called as the malabar the quadrilateral security dialogues important exercise which is talked here and let's quickly uh, mark the keywords and uh, previously they used to meet in foreign ministers levels and uh, 
China has called the Quad as Asian NATO of the future and they do not believe in this aligning grouping and exercise Malabar. And from 2007 and 2020, you saw on, there was the only year, 2007 and 2020 was the only year when all the four countries participated together in Operation Exercise Malabar. So from 2014 and 19, you see that normally India, US and Japan are the normal participants of Exercise Malabar. So we need to find more about Quad also. This is just an introduction. You need to know what is the basic ideology and what are the important areas and what is the role of India in the squad so all this and what is indo-pacific all this have things to be discussed in this now let's quickly take a news leads for civil services from this area you need to find out what you mean by indo-pacific very important for prelims as well as mains what is nato very important for mains as well as prelims mains question does the quad affect india china relationship how do you think quad is going to affect india china relationship and uh, watch out the military exercises very important for prelims as well as mains. The military exercises of other country like we discussed Malabar. We need to find out the other exercises of the country also. So this is all about Quad. And the next important news item that we are going to discuss is what is called as a ZS day. What do you mean by ZSD which is called as a zero shadow day? A lot of news items reported this Pune witnesses zero shadow day. This time virtually because this is one place zero shadow day is one such area or one such day when school children all across the country if definitely if you can witness a zero shadow day i will change the word not across the whole country because there is a reason why geographical reason why i said that it is not seen in all parts of india but some parts of india and uh, children makes it a point to do activities during the zero shadow day what does what does the word mean pune witnesses zero shadow day do you mean that the shadow disappears the shadow is not seen momentarily for some moment the shadow is not seen does it mean that there is no shadow at all yes there is shadow but the shape of the shadow and the momentary disappearance there are a lot of reason why that which we have to discuss here so what is zero shadow day let's quickly find out the important points regarding this and in this you can clearly see that some point the the zsd or zero shadow day you see that normally you imagine that this is an object when you see that the uh, rays is actually falling you will see shadows when you see that from this side or from this side when you take or you show up light imagine that you are just putting a light on top of this object when you just pass on this object from like this you will see this shadow being formed here or just make sure that you take the uh, light from this side and you'll see that the shadow being formed here so both the sides you can see when an object is created you can see shadows on basically you can see the shadows but what happens when sun this is very clear so that means you know the point of shadow so what happens when sun is actually at the zenith imagine that this is a sun and uh, the sun's rays falls vertically and uh, you will see that for mom for a moment there is no shadow that is a key point and this happens the phenomenon of zsd happens twice a year two times a year and where does it happen you have the tropic of Can between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn so zsd happened two times and what happens is normally you don't see the shadow here you don't see the shadow here there is no shadow that means for a moment the shadow disappears momentarily for some time that means the sun's rays fall vertical it happens that when it comes like this the shadow is actually masked you see that the shadow is actually masked this is a phenomenon that has been happening and in this regard you need to discuss what you mean by uttarayana and dakshinayana you should find out what you mean by the uttarayana concept and the dakshinayana concept and the movement of the sun everything is going to determine this important concept so this is what is called as a zero shadow day when you see that the shadow disappears momentarily for some time and in this you can just find out there is no shadow this is one such activity which is done by students uh, everybody who loves to watch this phenomenon and so let's quickly uh, 
get into the key important and let's mark the key important keywords this is the phenomenon yes disappearing of the shadow when the sun comes exactly overhead and that is what is called as zenith remember the term called as zenith which says that the sun comes exactly overhead and uh, this comes between the tropic of cancer between the tropics basically between the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn and in, we were discussing this article about pune so you should find out that jyotir vidya parisanstha or jvp is india's oldest astronomy amateur group which actually takes a lot of effort for this and zero sh shadow day happens twice a year of the places between plus 23.5 and minus 23.5 degrees of latitude so this 23.5 is very important one is tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn and uh, the phenomenon happens when sun's declination become equal to the latitude of the place very important point this happens when the sun's declination is equal to the latitude of the place and let's quickly uh, learn the other important points on a zero shadow day when the sun crosses the, the sun's rays fall exactly vertical to the objects on the ground and nobody and you can just see that did you see this there is shadow being marked here people are standing but the shadow is not falling here the shadow is not falling here but you can see the shadow is here the shadow is exactly here i'm just marking the shadows this is what is called as a zero shadow day i'm marking the shadows in the picture i'm marking you, you can see the shadow for yourself i have enlarged pictures also and is this shadow zero shadow day available throughout this country no the zst happen twice a year there are only two zst every year and zst is restricted to location between the tropics that means places north of ranchi in india are out of this zero shadow day because of the reason because the places north of ranchi and the places north of ranchi in india are out of it i'll show you the map and what do you mean the uttarayana means sun move northwards and the dakshinayana when the sun moves southwards so it is not available throughout this part of this country you can take a close look at this on top of north of ranchi zero the zsd is totally out of picture not to be seen here so this picture is very important it's very easy to understand also and uh, let's mark the keywords uttarayana means suns from the north to the winter solstice and the dakshinayana from back north to the south and uh, basically uh, all these are important point the sun's location moves from 23.5 to 23.5 south of east equator and back and uh, let's quickly uh, i'll show you quickly an important pictures let's take a close look at the pictures you can see the shadow formation according to the uh, you can clearly see the shadow formation according to the uh, time etc so this is the normal shadow that we can associate with and let's see this is the zero shadow you can just see when the sun is vertically overhead that means on the zenith this is the shadow that has been observed i think this is very clear so this is that means the shadow disappears momentarily for some time and you can also remember this important point this important point is also important please try the sun's location the all the places whose latitude equals the angle between the sun's location and the equator on that day will experience zero shadow day all places whose latitudes equals the angle between sun's location and the equator on that day will experience zero shadow day this is an important point to be remembered so i've showed you the type of zero shadow day and uh, it is it is a very olden concept also i'm just trying to put out this is a concept very old and also this is a practice in civilization especially the indian astronomical instrument called as shank please remember there is an indian astronomical instrument called as shank which was used by aryabhata for a similar purpose and even in 200 bc the eratosthenes the greek astronomer was living in egypt he observed the shadows of two vertical poles and two cities so all these are very very old so that is a point of zero shadow day i think you'll always remember the point of how this objects how the shadow forms you can see this is the zero shadow day i'm trying to mark that again in the picture there is a shadow here
So this is what is called as a zero shadow day. And the next important item that we're going to talk is about the Israel's Iron Dome Interceptor Rocket Technique. That means Israel-Palestine issue is something very hot in the news item. And you see that a lot of rockets coming from Gaza, coming from the Hamas-backed Gaza, is actually hitting at Israel. And uh, the media is showing the Iron Dome rocket interceptor that means hundreds of rockets which is actually coming is actually shielded by the israeli iron dome interceptor so this is the iron dome system and the invis invisible shield protecting israel from the hamas rocket so these are some of the important news items that appeared so definitely this we need to understand what is this iron dome interceptor so let's quickly uh, identify the important points here so you can see here in this image take a look at this image you can see this shield this is the shield that i am talking about because this iron dome is actually a intercepting shield very easily to understand the iron dome is actually an intercepting shield it's like it's like an invisible shield no matter how many rockets Hundreds and recently, you can see this image, recently hundreds, more than over 200 rockets were launched from the Hamas side to Israeli base. And each and every, this is like a shield, each and every rockets were neutralized by the Iron Dome interceptor. So you should know how this Iron Dome interceptor really works. The Iron Dome interceptor is actually having two important components, which is called as the radar. That is the key word here. The dome, the iron dome interceptor has the radar, the main elements, just talking about the two major elements. One is the radar and the second is the interceptor missile. One second is the interceptor missiles. Interceptor missiles. So the logic is this. Whenever you have an incoming missile system coming here, inside the base, you have another interceptor missile which neutralizes the missile so whenever there is an incoming wave this is the incoming missile the shield has the radar and tracks the incoming missile and sends an interceptor missile so this is the interceptor missile and this is the incoming missile so this is the most important thing and this is ha this has a technology called as c ram what do you mean by this concept c ram nothing but countering you can clearly find out what is the CRAM. You can find rockets, artillery, and mortars. You can find counter mass, massive number of rockets, artillery, mortars, or even unmanned vehicles. Anything, anything which is actually coming in the ambit of the shield. If that is an incoming thing, definitely there is. If there is an incoming, definitely there is an out intercepting outcome. There is an interceptor which is fired from here which neutralizes the thing this is what you see the rockets coming and everything is neutralized so this is what is called as iron dome interceptor of rockets so you should remember the uh, israel palestine issue so recently uh, hundreds of rockets were neutralized by the iron dome interceptor and now let's quickly find out the important quick points and uh, mark the keywords so the Gaza, the rockets fired from Gaza were intercepted by the Israeli Iron Dome air defense system. Very important. They were hitting an invis, they were like invisible shields. And what are they? They are short range, ground to air defense system that includes a radar and Tamar interceptor missiles that track and neutralize any rockets or missile aimed at target. So the, if this is the target, any missile coming here, reaching at this point will be neutralized. That means you cannot cross this everything comes here is neutralized because you have a strong radar and you have a strong interceptor missile so whichever missile is incoming the interceptor missile tracks it is actually like an invisible shield this is the image that i'm trying to tell you and uh, this is for rockets artillery and mortar this is the concept of c ram it's a concept of c ram so this is something that you have to uh, and the first Iron Dome goes back in 2006 in the Israeli-Lebanon war when the Iron Dome system was first utilized. And after that, Rafale, 
the very important agency says that it has over 90 percent of the uh, success rate and uh, more than 2000 interceptions is actually perfect perfectly done so rafael is rafael advanced defense systems limited known as rafael or rafael is an israeli defense technology company to be noted and uh, let's take the keywords the iron dome has three main systems that work to provide a shield over the area whether it is deployed and it has detection and tracking radar to spot any incoming threat a battle management and weapon control system which is called as it has got a radar and it has got a bmc what do you mean by bmc it is a battle management and weapon control system so this and then you have an interceptor missile then you have a missile which is an interceptor missile so there are three important parts the radar the bmc and the interceptor missiles and most often you say that for every uh, intercepting system you have one two important major aspect one is called as radar and the second is interceptor missile so one more important quick point that you need to how does this quickly work actually and in this iron dome interceptor there is something called as a proximity fuse what do you mean by a proximity fuse or a laser fuse it's called as a proximity fuse because this is an invisible shield and there are hundreds of incoming rockets artillery or mortars flowing into your territory and each and every intercepting missiles that goes to intercept the rockets may not hit the targets every time because it is impossible to say that all the interceptor missile will hit all the rockets in perfect target it may not hit them but there is something called as a proximity fuse which creates a radius of 10 meters and emits what is called as a sharpnel very very important it emits something what is called as sharpnels and it may not hit all the incoming radi incoming rockets maybe uh, it is targeting only three and there are five or six rockets and what happens is the proximity fuse what you know what it is when the proximity fuse when the interceptor goes near 10 meters of the incoming rocket what happens is within that 10 meters it releases sharpnels and strong stuffs which disintegrates everything within 10 meters anything that comes within the 10 meters so this is what is called as a proximity fuse which is working in an iron dome interceptor so let's quickly take a close look at what are the important points and find out we discussed about the radar and the important thing about the interceptor missile and please understand whenever there is a something in missile called as a proximity fuse or a laser control fuse when passing within 10 meters of the target this activates and blasts the missile with sharpnels that destroys the target so anything that comes within this 10 meters is likely to get destroyed so that is what is called as a proximity fuse so iron dome interceptor is something very 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 strong see how this is working and uh, the it even says that the iron dome interceptor has got a front approach the intercept warhead is best position to have its fragment strike you can see the image also how it has been fragmented and it has got a rear approach and a side approach targeting the rocket from the side increases the chance of miss but the interceptor blast can still hit the rocket's warhead do you see how the things have been fragmented the interceptor rocket you can see this is the incoming and this is the interceptor so there is a front approach rear approach and a side approach so these are the important way how which the israeli iron dome interceptor works and this is how it effectively neutralizes c ram which is called as rockets artilleries and mortars so this is israel's iron dome interceptor technique so uh, this is an important few things that we should note here and let's take a close look at what are the uh, important news leads for prelims as well as for mains you should definitely know israel and palestine issue for the mains examination the problem the gaza problem the role of hamas west bank equation etc all these issues are very very important for your for your mains it's better you have an idea about this and uh, what is a radar and what do you mean by this laser system 
and uh, you should definitely find out what do you mean by the Indian Ballistic Missile, Defi Missile Defense Program. You should definitely find out what do you mean by the Indian Ballistic Missile Defense Program. So that is also very important. We have learned about the uh, Israel's dome project. You should know what is Indian Ballistic Missile Defense Program of India. Very important for prelims as well as for mains. So these are the important news leads that you have to learn from this area. So uh, with this, we have come to the end of uh, Simply Simplified and uh, most important topics of today's are uh, discussed and decoded and I've given you a fair review about everything. Read it again, pause it and watch it. And uh, please do subscribe to our channel for if you want more current affairs related videos like this of daily newspaper analysis for your prelims as well as for main. So definitely subscribe to the channel Learn Stroke. So this is Arjun Arshankar. Thank you.